Hi guys, welcome back to the We Run On Coffee podcast with Marissa and Erica. And we're here for Marissa Hour today. So if you guys know, that means that Erica has no idea what I'm going to talk about today. No clue. Do you have any ideas? Literally no, but I I do assume that this is going to kick off our spooky season of just yes. all of our fall and spooky episodes. But other than that, like I literally have no clue. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to tell you that there's something in frame that is like going to give you a like a sneak peek. Is it your Yeah. Friend? It is my shirt. Yeah. So I am wearing a shirt that says true crime all the time. It's so, so it's cute. a true crime story today. I love it. You guys but need the shirt. It's so cute. We, I, I actually got it from an Instagram giveaway. I entered <gasps> one Nuh-uh. for this, uh, this like apparel bl- brand that I like. It's called Murder Apparel. And they just have like a bunch of spooky t-shirts. Yeah. And I entered the giveaway and I got a $100 gift card. Oh, and shoot. I bought this shirt and like two others and then like a crew Wait, neck. That's so cute. Wait, is one of them your ghost one that you have? You have like a ghost sh- or no skeletons skeleton shirt or ghost? the skeletons like skateboarding yes yes that's so it's cute. not that one that one i got from you have all the spooky know. i think apparel. urban outfitters <laughs> i love that yeah one. i love them i have like eight shirts with skeletons on them and nice. i just love them so much <laughs> but the one i'm wearing today is the true crime all the time true t-shirt the time. and that means that we're doing a true crime story wow but before we get into it do you want to start with your updates or do you want me to start? Okay. Because I've prefaced Erica that I've got some scary <laughs> updates. You start. I'm too excited to hear these. Okay. So brace yourself. Oh, my boy. first update is that I haven't ran in over a week. <gasps> oh, no. Did because you get hers? Oh. Look at this. Oh, <gasps> no, guys. She's in a boot. No. I'm in a boot. I went last Sunday because my foot has been hurting for like two weeks. Uh huh. And it's not broken and it's not stress fractured, but they think I have a foot sprain. So uh-huh. oh. that could take like three to six weeks to heal. Oh, no. But it's starting to feel better. I might try and go on a small run tomorrow. Mm-hmm. No way. Dude. Yeah. Are you guys still going to run? In the marath- um, marathon? Well, we did pay $200 <gasps> for each of us to enter this. Oh, my God. It was $200 total. So I think we have to. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Oh, my gosh. That's so sad. I know it's so sad, Rip but it's starting to feel better, and I'm hoping that tomorrow mm-hmm. I might be able to like do like a small one mile run and see how mm-hmm. I feel. Oh my god, I hope, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you guys can run. This is so depressing. I know I'm so I'm sad. sad, but that's my sad update. Okay. But I do have some happy ones. Okay. So <laughs> last Sunday, after I went to the doctor and got my uh-huh. foot in a boot i went to the mall with kyle and we bought our wedding bands <gasps> whoa that's really exciting that is kind of I like know. so random i just kind of forget about that i forget you get wedding bands you know <laughs> yeah so we went and bought our wedding bands kyle's wow. already came in i actually sent out my engagement ring to get resized with the wedding band so uh-huh. i don't have my ring right now yeah and i haven't had it for a week and it's not supposed to come in until next sunday which is really sad Your because party. the bridal shower is next yeah. Sunday and I don't know if I'll have it in time. Oh, that's so sad. But that's exciting though because, you know, you want it to fit and look good. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. Know. Wait, I can't wait to see what they look like. How cute. Yeah. And we're not going to show anybody until the actual wedding. Yes. That's so, so good. It's a surprise. I love that. Um, what else have I done? Those are like my two biggest updates. Yesterday, Kyle and I went to the Bengals preseason yes, that's right. football game. It was so hot. It was 95 degrees. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It was unbearably hot, and they lost, so we suffered through the the heat for nothing. That hurts. (laughs) That hurts really bad. And then that was, like, all day yesterday. That's really all we've done (laughs) because we haven't been able to run in the past, like, week and a half. Oh, my God. You have the highs and lows, dude. I know. That's crazy. Well... I'm ready to hear your updates. I have a lot. (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to keep it brief. But I think I mentioned on the last episode that my friend Cree from childhood and her daughter, who's two years old, Willow, were going to come spend the night. And they did. And it was so fun. I was like, this is so cute. We just had like a little sleepover. Angela and I went around and baby proofed the house before like they got here (laughs) so that she wouldn't like fall and hit her head on something sharp or whatever. So that was so 
weird just to think about how many things in your house are not meant for like a child because oh my god we had a lot scary. yeah <laughs> so that was fun we had them come stay the night and now it's going to be i think it's going to be like a little tradition like once a month i think they're going to come just spend one Aww. night which is so fun we took her over to angelo's mom so willow got to jump on a trampoline for the first time in her life which was so freaking Aww. funny and Cree and i were just bouncing her and just making her fly you know like popcorn on the trampoline and she was just cracking up it was so cute and then we took her in the hot tub which we made like a pool like we made it like a cold tub if you will or warm and so it was like a little sw- like her size swimming pool and she was just splashing around and like drinking it which was disgusting and it was just so cute <laughs> had a fire made hot dogs all that kind of stuff and like i'm just obsessed so Aww. shout out Cree and willow because she's so cute i'll have to send you a picture she's a redhead super curly red hair and she's she's Aww. crazy she's so cute <laughs> um also this week this is so nice i took a mental health day from work on tuesday just because i felt like it and i hung out mm-hmm. all day with angelo and we planted it was his last Aww. day of uh his last day of freedom if you will <laughs> before school <laughs> um no he it was his last day off of school so we went outside and like did all of our garden and planting and then we went in the hot tub as well and had food and it was just nice so that was cool and then the Aww. day after that at work i went to uh, like like a virtual conference so that was really fun the american marketing association virtual conference shout out <laughs> so that's just kind of random but <laughs> something fun that i did at work and i learned about marketing things which is not very fun for some people but i thought it was fun and then two more things so last night angela's mom she does this kind of every year she's like does everyone want to come over and have a back to school lasagna night because she makes homemade lasagna with like homemade sauce and and everything and it's so good it's like everyone's favorite so she asked if we wanted to have our back to school lasagna night and she made me an entire pan of lactose free lasagna and it was so good i haven't had lasagna in like Aww. over a year if not longer and it was so fire so thank you julie shout out if you're Aww. listening to this someday she will listen to this she doesn't listen to them live but someday. i know someday she'll hear this so someday thanks julie she'll hear it. because it made my day and angela tried it and he was like this is so good like i'd almost rather eat yours like yours is delicious Aww. so now i just have like a pan of lasagna in the fridge that i can actually eat which is shocking <laughs> so that was yeah. awesome and then my last one is i don't know why i wrote this i don't know i i feel <laughs> like i told you this already but i can't remember but i'll tell the podcast maybe they don't know if you've been listening guys if you're og you know that we've been having this back and forth me and marissa about whether or not we're visiting her for thanksgiving and it's finally official okay. so i just wrote that down because i wanted to share with everybody we're officially <laughs> going for thanksgiving to dc and i'm so Yay. excited because we haven't been there in a minute and we haven't gotten to see their new apartment mm-hmm. although we did see the outside yay but not the inside yeah and I'm so we're not excited. gonna be having thanksgiving here right unfortunately to me stairs. because we live on the fourth floor Literally. and we have grandparents coming <laughs> yeah. so that's a little bit mean to make our like make oma Just walk track. up four flights of stairs Literally. that's horrible so we're so gonna excited. do it at whatever airbnb they decide to get yes. but it'll be so fun and I'm i can't pumped. wait oh and i started which I know you already have some, but I started some countdowns on my phone because I used to do Uh this and I would always have something on my phone. So I had something to look forward to. And then for a while I didn't, I'm like, maybe that's why I'm so sad. I have no countdowns. I have nothing to look forward (laughs) to. So now I have 46 days and 21 hours until we leave for your wedding. (laughs) Not your actual wedding day, but till we leave for the trip. Yeah. And then 73 days until mine and Angela's trip um, for our anniversary. So I'm so excited. Yay. So in between those two is... I think in between those two is Thanksgiving. After. No. After Thanksgiving's those, after that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, because Angela and I are going to be in North Carolina, then we're going to come back, and then we're going to go to D.C. within like two weeks. So this is going to be crazy. That's okay. But it's going to we'll be, be in so Greece fun. And then come Literally. back here within two weeks. So. That's true. <laughs> I'm so excited. But yeah, that's my updates. Mine are, I feel like we're actually pretty decent for once. I, you know, have a good week. Pretty chill. But before we get started on the spooky episode, what are you drinking? Okay, I felt I think I have more updates, but before we forget about what we're drinking, I'm going to tell you. Okay. so my first well, I don't know what I'm saying. My coffee is from a new coffee shop. It's called Badass Coffee of Hawaii. And I don't really know how they made it to the U.S. because I think it used to just be in Ohio. Not I can't speak. It just (laughs) used to be in Hawaii. But I got a coffee today called a bonfire lava with Wait, no, the lava is the cold foam, I guess. Oh, oh. I'm figuring this out. Okay. But it is 
<laughs> the size is a big kahuna, <gasps> which I love just that. means that it's 24 ounces instead of 16 ounces. That's cute. And it comes with toasted marshmallow, macadamia nut, and dark Ooh. chocolate swirl topped with toasted marshmallow, cold lava, and graham cracker crumble. Oh my God. That sounds great. It's so good. I love oh it. It does not look as pretty as the picture. Yeah. But when does anything? it is delicious. Yeah. I know. Oh my God. Oh my God. I want to go there. If it becomes so one of good. your faves, then I'll have to check it out when I come. I think it already is based <gasps> off of like this much of my coffee being That's gone. crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. We're going to so go good. when you come for Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Badass. What are you drinking? Badass. Um, I'm drinking. Okay. So story time. <laughs> Earlier in the week, Marissa <laughs> texted me a little picture of this Chobani mm-hmm. oat creamer. Mm-hmm. Was it Chobani? Wait, no. Califia Farms. No. Sorry. Califia yes. Farms oat creamer. And it's caramel apple crumble and marissa mm-hmm. was like i've been looking for this for like a minute i was like i never even heard of it so then that night literally that same day i went to target and bought it and sent her a picture back because i was like that sounds amazing and i've been drinking it ever since i like it so i am drinking it's so good a i, d- I still did a little brown sugar in my espresso so i made a little brown sugar shot and then i used the creamer and oat milk and that's what i'm drinking and it's so good i love it mm-hmm. with the brown sugar it really yeah, tastes okay, like a so- treat I can't tell if my Nespresso pods are like old and they taste bad oh. or if my coffee machine needs to be like descaled or something oh, because yeah. every time I drink it, my coffee tastes bad no. and I know it's not the milk because the milk's good. The creamer's like new and I yeah. just, I can't figure it out. So okay, I've just been going places and buying coffee, which is unfortunate because coffee is expensive, but <laughs> literally <laughs> I do this on nothing else, but for Nespresso, I literally descale it every three months, like it says. And that's actually mm-hmm. been a game changer. I didn't realize that it was going to help, which sounds really dumb, I know. But <laughs> I started doing it and I've been really happy about it. So I'm going to send you what I have in case you're interested on Amazon. It's like okay. $14 for two packs. So that'll last you for six months, uh-huh. which is nice. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so I'm yeah I might just need to descale it because I'm starting to get into like fall and that's when I like to have coffee again. True. I'm definitely like a energy drink over the summer kind of girl. But also I'm so excited tomorrow. The Ooh. Witch's Brew Alani oh. flavor drops again and that is my all time favorite and I cannot wait. <laughs> I saw this on your Instagram. Is that like it only comes out once a year and it's just a short. Yeah thing. it's their yeah, it's their fall flavor and it's a Ooh. caramel apple flavor and it's so freaking good. And I That's just need exciting. to buy like 10 cases so that I can have it all year round. Oh my God. Every time I go to Sam's Club, I see the Kim Aid and I'm like, mm, I want to try it. Don't want to buy a case at Sam's Club, but Dusty. I know. I'm so sad because Costco only has variety packs of oh, Alani's yeah. and they have the peach flavor in it and I don't like peach. So yeah, I never buy it same. from Costco. So I have to buy it from like the regular store at the normal price mm-hmm. instead of the wholesale price. That's tea. Unfortunately. That is unfortunate. Oh, you guys, update for the listeners. I'm going to post this. Ooh, that's a great if you know you know story. I need to write it down. Um, I did my own nails yesterday and I literally <gasps> yes. can't believe I did it. Like I'm walking around looking at them like my nail girl did it. I, I'm shocked at how good they turned out, you guys. They're but so good. Thank you. I did a little checker print and it is perfection. And that's all. I just I had to brag about that for a second. And if you want me to do your shower nails, them. hit me up because apparently I'm pro now. Like I'm going professional. <laughs> apparently. I can't even help it. I don't know. I was thinking with Kyle yesterday and I want to go somewhere to like get my nails done prior, but yeah. I don't want to have my wedding nails prior to my wedding. Right. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? But I want to get something similar to like what I want on wedding oh, day, but tea. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah. If you go somewhere in Columbus, let me know. I'll send you my girl. She's amazing. Okay. But okay. I'm okay. I remember. I'm oh, you remember your updates? Are you? Yes. So okay. I have one more that's like big. Okay. So remember how I told you that we got the Airbnb for when we go to Rome yes. the night before we go on the cruise? We yeah. got scammed. So <gasps> no. We, yeah, we don't. We don't have an Airbnb at this point for a place in Rome the night before we leave for the cruise because the guy messaged me and he's like, every other night is open besides the night that you need. And I was like, okay, that's understandable. Maybe you forgot to mark it as like Mm -hmm. booked. That's not what he did. He was trying to get me to cancel because then I wouldn't get a refund, but he needed to cancel for me. So I would get a refund. We got the refund end of story, but we don't have anywhere to stay right now. So we got to figure that out again. (laughs) At least, you know, he's living in well. (laughs) We've been having some bad Airbnb (laughs) scams this year. What the hell? Not that mine was a scam, you guys, if you know, you know, but that's wild. (laughs) Well, I hope you guys find something soon. Yeah, we'll be looking because it's only 48 days until the wedding. 
That's literally so crazy, dude. I'm ready. Last night we so when we went to lasagna last night at Angelo's mom's, me, Angelo, and Dominic stayed up really late. Like you, I said, I went to bed at one a.m. But that's because we stayed up all night playing video games, um, sports on the Switch, and Angelo just got into this like mood where he was just being so silly, and he just started playing Twenty One Savage out of nowhere. And me and Dominic were just in the back, like dancing to Twenty One Savage, playing like <laughs> tennis, and uh, and then. All I could think about was the wedding. And I was like, this is about to be crazy. I'm so ready just mm-hmm. to dance. Like, it's I so fun. Wait. Same. I'm so excited. I'm Because ready. we've started filling out, like, the music form for, like, yes. we picked out, like, the intro <gasps> song for, like, That's the really bridal exciting. party. <laughs> and we picked out the intro song for us. And I think it's going to be so Bruh. good. I, <laughs> I can't wait. wait. I was thinking of you last night because do you know how on the radio they do like remixes when it gets late at night? They like remix mm-hmm. recent songs. We were listening to one of the remixes and it was literally Post Malone, congratulations. And then it went into Doja Cat and it was um, Doja Cat's Paint the Town Red. And oh, it honestly hit. I was like, why is the radio so good right now? <sighs> I we just wait. drove around I'm listening so to that. It was so good. Yeah, we've been like in contact with the dj like a lot more recently Mm -hmm. because i had a bunch of questions for him and he is like above and beyond he is like for the amount of money that we're paying him i feel like i hope he doesn't listen to this he shouldn't (laughs) he doesn't know really who i am yeah but he shouldn't be giving me this much work like Mm -hmm. this much labor for the amount of money i'm paying him yeah but that's amazing it's worth it (laughs) okay and the wedding episode when you do the deep dive you'll have to tell us all your vendors if you want to share like uh who who was really good because that would be so awesome Maybe I'll use I'm them so someday. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Eh. Oh well, <laughs> this is so fun. Dude. Okay, I'm are so you excited. ready? For the, Let's get started. For Let's the meat. True crime all the time. <laughs> okay, so this is a topical story. Okay, because it happens in Hawking Hills. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, you guys. If you haven't been following, and if you're not an OG, or if you're not a true fan, you might not know that's where Marissa's getting married. Yes. Ooh, so. I thought that it would be topical because I looked and this episode comes out on September 13th, which is almost a month to the day from the (gasps) day I'm getting married. You're right. And did you, listen, bitch, did you plan for us to show up on Friday the 13th? Because yesterday, Julie was like, what day uh, or what time you guys can we get there on on Friday? And I said, what day is that? And I looked it up. I said, Friday the 13th. And I said, you guys. She definitely planned that. And uh, uh, Grace not. Grace was like, oh, she totally did. That's so Marissa. It was I so promise, funny. I promise I did not plan How that. How perfect, the though. Re- the rehearsal dinner is at 7 p.m. on Friday the 13th. That's <laughs> spooky. After this story, I'm a little nervous. So, good thing that you guys are coming into town on the Literally. 13th and you planned that because we do have the rehearsal dinner and I forgot to tell everybody that. So. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. But it's also, okay, this is the last tangent before I get started. Okay, I love it. The, October 13th is one of my bridesmaids' birthdays. Aww. And so okay. we're like having like a little birthday party for her like That's that so night. That's cute. Like, and I was like, I honestly forgot that it was a Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. <laughs> it's that's so, so on brand. Funny. I'm like, it's so on I brand. Know. It's just perfect for you. I'm so, I'm so excited. Okay. Anyways, Yay. no more saying I'm excited. I'm getting into the spooky, spooky story. Okay. I'm ready. So. On October 4th in 1982 in Logan, Ohio, so just outside of Hawking Hills, there was two people. They were a couple. One's name was Annette Cooper. She was 18. And her fiance, Todd Schultz, who was 19, went missing. Mm. So I got the majority of this information from an oxygen buried in the backyard episode. So it's just like on the oxygen channel, they have like these different kind of... I guess stories I don't know like shows or like series yeah and it's based off of like the type of murder it is so this one says buried in the backyard so we can assume that we find them eventually buried in the backyard so a little bit of background on the two people Annette her mother sister and her stepfather moved from Xenia Ohio which is outside of Cincinnati Mm -hmm. to Logan Ohio in 1970 so at the time of their disappearance they lived there for about 12 years so they were kind of newer to the area but they knew the area because they'd been there for a little bit of time and Todd he and his two brothers and sister um, just kind of lived in the area and Annette when she had turned 18 moved in with them right after high school Mm -hmm. and everything 
Todd was described as an artist, a dreamer, and a super responsible person. And Annette was similar. She was studying computer science at Hawking College, <gasps> so just a nearby smart. community college. Smart girly. I know. They were both super smart. They were kind of dreamers. Like they came from like smaller town, Ohio, and they were trying to get their lives together and get started. And like I said, they were fiancés to each other. So Aww. they were just this is their way lives too topical together. for you. <laughs> I know. Well, Well, good thing me and Kyle don't die at the end of the story. Thank God. (laughs) Hopefully. Bless. So Annette and Todd enjoyed walking around Logan, Ohio. There's a specific area by the train tracks by the Hawking River that they really liked walking around just down by the river. And they like doing it late at night, just kind of like a little fall evening. Like I said, this is in October. So during the fall, they just like to walk around in the area and just kind of enjoy the weather and each other's company. Why do I have shivers already? The The evening before their disappearance, the couple was heard arguing at Todd's parents' house. So Todd and her had just gotten into a disagreement, Todd and Annette and their family, since they all lived in Todd's parents' house, they just kind of heard them arguing and they were like, hi, I wonder what's going on. Mm. but that night they went out for one of their walks like normal and they were just going down by the river. They told the family that they were leaving. And then the next morning, Greg, Todd's brother realized that they never came home the night before. And they were like, Oh, I wonder if they like fell asleep in the field or whatever. Cause that was pretty topical of the time in 1980s. They right. would just go out <laughs> to the field, spend the night together to kind of get away from the family, especially because they were living in Todd's fa- parents' house just to yeah, get rip. some alone time. And so the next morning when Greg had said that, Todd's brother, they were like, okay, let's maybe think about it for a little bit. But then they ended up filing a missing persons report with the police. And they thought, the police initially thought that maybe they ran off to elope because they were 18 and 19. Right, they were adults, yeah. And they were like, yeah, they were like, maybe they just ran off together. They wanted to spend a little bit of time alone. They wanted to do elope and not do it with the family stuff. But... Tips started coming in once they had like ramped up the missing persons investigation and they started piecing together the last hours that Annette and Todd had spent together. So they were seen by a witness carrying things close to the cornfield. They described these things as like pillows, a blanket, a picnic basket. So like I said, they were probably going out there to just, yeah, spend time with each other, have a late night picnic, hang out, watch the stars, Got anything it. like that. Not uncommon. Okay. Things that people do in a small town yeah. still today. What else are you going to do, right? Yeah. But there was another eyewitness report, or I guess an ear witness report for this one. <laughs> I like that. that. Said that they, had heard, they had heard gunshots and a woman's scream close to the last known whereabouts of Todd and Annette. Oh. So we can assume that maybe that was Annette screaming off in the distance. The gunshots, we can assume that that was probably a murder weapon of some sort. And they just kind of heard that out in the like area of like the Hawking River in the cornfield that they were talking about. Ooh. And in this episode, they described the cornfield as Logan's backyard, like the community's okay. backyard. Because I guess I haven't really been to this part of Logan. I've really only been to mm-hmm. the downtown part. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing around like the outskirts of town, there's a big cornfield that just it like backs up to everybody's massive. house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they just kind of all go and hang out there. So that's why they were com- like referring to it as the community's backyard. So after they had canvassed the area for a week, the police started investigating the cornfield that I was talking about around the riverbank. So this is after they had gotten a bunch of tips called in from standers by and stuff like that around the time of their disappearance. And like I said, they were canvassing for about a week. So they were talking to eyewitness statements. They were talking to people in the town. They were kind of going around asking family members anything like, hey, have you heard from Annette? So at this point, they've been missing for a week. And they go down to the cornfield around the riverbank. And the first thing that the police find is a human torso (gasps) along the riverbank. No. Dismembered? Like alone? Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Oh, boy. So all they find is the torso part. So no arms, no legs, no head, (gasps) just the torso. That's bad. And they... They were so shocked because Logan, Ohio is still a small town, but they were right. expecting to see a body, not right. a torso. Right. They were like, okay, well, if we find, it's like, we extreme. heard gunshots, we're, yeah, we're assuming that these people went missing. They didn't run away to elope at this point because there's eyewitness statements saying that they saw them walking out there and that they heard gunshots and screams and everything. Ugh. So they're like, oh, we're expecting to find, like, a buried body. 
Nope, they find a dismembered torso in the backyard of the community. Oh, my And gosh. a few minutes later, they find another torso. And they said that they were unclothed, but they were very obviously one me- male torso and one mm-hmm. female torso. So they were like, this is probably Annette and Todd's bodies or torsos, but they could not get a positive identification yet because there was no heads right. for them to be able to look and identify them. Mm-hmm. So... They continue looking around the area, and the next part that they find, they uh, find an arm in the cornfield area. So then they start digging and unearthing a little bit more ground, and they begin finding more and more body parts as they continuously dig down. And once they find that first arm, they, like I said, they continuously find more. So they pull out like legs, arms, everything, and then they eventually find a head. And the head that they find was described to be a blonde haired, blue eyed girl, (gasps) which is exactly what Annette looked like. No. Do you have any ideas of what has happened yet? No, but I imagine like, okay, when you first hear like some of these stories, usually you're like, okay, the partner is the first person you go to, right? So Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, they found the woman. Okay. It was maybe the boyfriend. That's the first suspect. Almost always. I feel like when you listen to like true, Mm -hmm. true crime stories, but if they were both dismembered, there's obviously something happening here. So I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm well, so far, we only know that it's Annette's head and there's a mm. second torso. We don't know that it's Todd Not yet. Todd. Oh, that's T. In which case, let me throw out a conspiracy theory. Just for funs. For funsies. <laughs> okay. What if... Okay, this is just a what if, you guys. So An- Annette was cheating on Todd, okay, with this other man. And then Todd found out and he dismembered them. That's all. I rest my case. I'm here for the drama. However, <laughs> I'm sure that's not what happens. Dig and they, but find, it's funny. <laughs> they continue to dig and they find Todd's head. So <gasps> it's not that. <laughs> it's Todd. Oh my God. So there's someone else. There's a third party that we need to know about. There is a third party. So they, well, okay. So I jumped the gun a little bit because my next <laughs> note says the second head was discovered, but it was so beaten that they were unable to mm-hmm. identify it right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. However, oh. Like I said, I jumped the gun. It was Todd. <laughs> okay, well, that's T, though. That's, yeah, that's not good. Some trauma to that. But head. imagine the what investigators happened? at the time, and yeah. they were like, oh, well, we have a head. We can't decide that it's Todd Ooh. right away. Yeah. But they're like, maybe it was Todd. Maybe, it, like, their oh, head just goes spiraling. Start going a million miles Literally. a minute. Literally, yeah. But using um, dental records and medical records, okay. they were able to determine that they were the bodies, the dismembered bodies of Annette and Todd. Wow. So moving forward, they continue looking in the in the crime scene now, the area that they've determined to be the crime scene, which is the cornfield next to the Hawking River Riverbank. And they start canvassing the area again for more evidence that doesn't include body parts. Okay. And the first thing that they find is a boot print that was found in like the the wet area next mm-hmm. to the riverbank. Mm-hmm. And they take a plaster cast of that. So they basically Ooh. just pour in like if you think about like uh, like a ceramics class mm-hmm. or something like they take clay or plaster and they just pour it in and then they pull it out wow. and they have a, a version of the boot print that they can take back. So after they do that, they take the bodies to the coroners because that's all the evidence that they've really found in the scene at this point. And they take the body to the coroner's office and they start to do the autopsies on them. So I don't know what this means, but I put 22. (laughs) No, I don't know. Interesting. I'm guessing like 22 stab wounds or something oh Oh. i know what it is um see these notes are sometimes very very detailed and then other times i just write down 20 literally numbers i don't know what that means (laughs) the 22 is that they were shot with a 22 millimeter pistol got it that's what it means okay and then they were dismembered with a knife so like i said earlier there was an eyewitness report or an ear witness report like i said earlier of a gunshot and then a woman's scream okay so we can assume that they were shot and that was the like the their, uh, their cause, cause of, death. of death. Yeah. And then they were dismembered with what they called either a knife or a machete. Oh. They weren't sure what kind. Mm-hmm. And the coroner described Todd's cuts as crisp and clean. And they described Annette's as more like frenzied, like a little bit more rough around the edges. Interesting. Like kind of, I guess, kind of a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. And... This is a little bit graphic, but Todd did have his penis cut off as well. Oh, wow. So, 
Yeah, so they think they're they're thinking at this point like, well, obviously, like it could be sexually motivated if they're cutting off the genitalia of one of the victims, uh-huh. and if Annette's are a little bit more frenzied, maybe they were like more angry at her, right. something like that. But as mm. of right now, in the investigation, they're not sure. Okay, this is so, my thoughts on the cuts. Okay, I want to throw this in because yes. I just want to know if I'm going to be right sometime. Okay, this is my thoughts. They started with Todd. Okay, so this person, I feel like maybe they were good with a knife. Maybe they were a butcher. Who knows? But I feel like they started with Todd. And then maybe they made her watch. I know it's graphic, but that's why she screamed. Maybe. Maybe. And then he was in a hurry. Or they. So sorry. They, murderer, was in a hurry. And maybe that's why they were more frenzied. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe they weren't as angry. They were just in a hurry. I don't know. That's all have to hypothesize we'll see we'll see <laughs> okay so like i said this happened in 1982 so of course because right. it's the 80s they assumed cult activity immediately oh great they were like there's some sort <laughs> obviously there's some sort of satanic cult out in the woods that is out here killing people great yeah of obviously course. and satanic panic is basically just when rock music started to become more prevalent they thought that rock music was of the devil mm-hmm. for some reason and they thought that all of these teens were being possessed by the devil to become satanic cults and okay. basically it's a way to describe that things happen in your town and give it like a, kind of like a scapegoat right <laughs> and be right. like well of course the satanic cult that lives <laughs> in the woods did this nobody Obviously. in our town could ever do this right but They start thinking satanic panic. They think it's ritualistic because it's around Halloween. They're like, Mm. maybe people are like out here, like (laughs) offering up the bodies to the devil. I don't know. But anyways, there was no evidence of cult killings (laughs) found. They didn't find any like cult artifacts or satanic artifacts out in the area of the uh, like crime scene. But because it was so close to Halloween and because they weren't able to determine who had committed these murders, they postponed trick or treat, of course, of because course. they were like, let's not let the kids go, go out. find body parts, literally. Yeah, exactly. So the next part is the funeral. So the whole town comes to memorialize Todd and Annette and kind of share their remorse and their mourning together, including all of Todd's family. However, Annette's mother and her stepfather, Dale, do not come oh, to the funeral. That's odd. So, oh, Dale, I'm looking at you, yes. my friend. Okay, wait, maybe pause. did they ever look in the water for any evidence or no? They or did. They okay. just they did look through the water, but all they were able to find was the body parts along the okay. riverbanks. Got it. So no, no weapon has been located. Interesting. No, not yet. So, like I said, Annette's mother and her stepfather, Dale, did not come Hmm. to the funeral. And Greg, um, Todd's brother, starts to, like, feel really weird about this. The way that in the Oxygen show, it seemed like Greg was the older brother. I'm not exactly sure if that's true. I didn't look up to see. But he seemed, like, super protective. And he seemed like he wanted to, like, get the investigation going. He was like, what happened to my brother? Let's see what happened to Annette. Let's figure it out. So he starts like asking questions and he's like, what the heck is happening? Like he didn't come. He talks to his family and he was like, why didn't like, why did Annette move in with us? And why didn't her family come to the funeral? Right. Like, What is happening? So Greg starts asking these questions and he learns why Annette moved in in the first place. So um, his family, so his mom and dad, Todd's parents as well. They talk to Greg about this and they're like, oh, Annette moved in because her stepfather, Dale, had been sexually Mm. assaulting her since she was 12. (gasps) Oh, my God. And she was 18, remember, at the time of her death. So he had been molesting her for the entirety of the time that they had really lived together. And so he was like, wow, that's weird. I think Dale did this because, like I said, it was kind of a sexually motivated crime. They Mm -hmm. cut off the genitalia of Todd and it was like really frenzied of an attack on Annette and how they dismembered her. So it seemed like it was some sort of like crime of passion. Like Dale was coming to like, I don't know, cut up (laughs) them and like prove that Annette was like his or Mm -hmm. something. Really weird, weird situation. So the detectives ask, um, ask Dale, they're like, hey, where were you at the time of the crime? They start investigating him because Greg has really put out these like feelers of Dale Mm -hmm. is suspicious. Like we don't like Dale. Like we think he did it. 
So he said that he was at home and every single day after work, he liked to get naked and read the newspapers after work in his chair. Okay, Dale. Which I wrote, I wrote in parentheses, ew. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> because ew. The fuck? First off, you're just subjecting your family to you being naked on the couch uh. every day. Why? That's weird. But anyways... They were like, okay, whatever. This he is weird. Really, Maybe he, he really just wanted it. to say that to the police out loud. He really just wanted to be like, yeah, he did. I, I, I'm naked after work. Ew. That's like literally all he said. He was like, yeah, I came home. I got naked and I read the newspaper. So I obviously couldn't have killed obviously. Annette and Todd. Ew. Because I was naked on the couch. Like, of course. <laughs> so Annette felt like she had to run away because she was being subjected to this every day after school. She would come home. Dale would come home from work and she was like... He's naked. I don't know what to do. And they start being suspicious, like I said earlier, that Dale wanted her dead because he was jealous of Todd and Mm -hmm. that he couldn't have this innocent little girl, Annette, to himself, which is disgusting. Right. Dale denied that he had any any uh, part in the death, but he was still the strongest suspect Mm -hmm. as determined by the detectives and the police in Logan. So... They bring him a warrant and they're like, hey, can we please look through your house for like any evidence that this is something that you did? So he signed the warrant. He's like, absolutely. You can come into my house. You can look through all of my stuff. He's being super cooperative, which we know from other investigations that says that's typically either it's super like good evidence that they're being so cooperative because they want to be involved in the investigation or it means that they are innocent and they have nothing to hide. Yeah. So he signs the warrant. They look around in his house and they find a machete with blood on it. Uh, and they think that this could be the thing that they used in the dismemberment. Dale. Right? <laughs> okay. I don't know. And then they find a blood soaked carpet in his house. Jesus. And he blamed he blamed skinning a deer on this. Okay. And I said in parentheses, bruh, why are you skinning a deer in the living room? Literally. <laughs> Literally on the carpet. <laughs> With your machete? I was like... Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, weird. So they were like, is this human blood? Let's figure it out. Is this a crime scene? And they look at the blood and try and figure it out. And whatever. We don't have the results yet. They just take the blood. They try and figure out if it's human blood and if this is a crime scene. Okay. So another thing that they found was that Dale always wore cowboy boots. And he Mm. handed them over to see if that boot print was his. However, the boot print came back inconclusive. They were unable to determine if that was the boot print found at the scene. Mm -hmm. So that happens sometimes. Things can be similar. They're not able to make a definitive answer. Mm -hmm. Also could be Todd's boot, question mark. I know. It could be. Yeah. So I wrote down, this is stupid because blood (laughs) was found. They couldn't do DNA, but they, they... I don't know. I just thought it was stupid because they did have blood typing in the 80s. They didn't have DNA, uh-huh. but they could have at least like looked to see if it was human blood or if it matched the blood type of Dale? like Dale or Annette. Yeah. And I thought oh, it yeah. was stupid. <laughs> but it, I said that it, they only had the circumstantial evidence to rely on, the inconclusive boot print. Mm-hmm. So... Continuing on, Dale gets arrested for the murders because they found the circumstantial evidence. They found the blood and they found the boot and they found a machete. Right. None of it has been proven to be related to the crime, but they said, we think we have enough of circumstantial evidence. Let's go to trial. Okay. So he decides to go to a trial by court, which is not a trial by jury. Mm -hmm. It is a where the judges are the jury so they'll have a bunch of different judges in here and the judges determine the ruling instead of having your peers come in like a normal jury trial so the prosecution decides to use the shoe and the motive of jealousy to kind of try and convict him Mm -hmm. dale stays quiet throughout the entire trial he's not like blurting out things he's not like yelling i'm innocent he didn't say anything else it was a two-week-long trier, trial, and after four hours of deliberation, the uh, judges find him guilty. So, after that, he is sentenced to death by lethal Damn. injection. Oh, shit. And unfortunately, this is not the end of the story. Oh, oh boy. I'm ready. So, I'm buckled Dale in. decides, after you get sentenced to death, or you get sentenced to jail, depending on the crime that you have 
committed, you get a certain amount of appeals. Mm -hmm. For death sentences, I believe that you get three appeals. So after seven years, Dale decides to exhaust his first appeal. Mm -hmm. And when he does so, this is under new prosecution, and he says that they ruled the boot print was inadmissible because of the way that it was collected. Mm -hmm. And they turned over the decision saying that it was a wrongful conviction and Dale is released. (gasps) Whoa. Isn't that crazy? After only seven years too. I mean, that's a long time, Mm -hmm. but it's also not. How old was Dale? Yeah. Um, I don't know. He was probably like in his 50s, Hmm. 60s. Okay. So Dale gets released. They say it's wrongful conviction. The boot print should have never been admissible. That's Mm. basically the only evidence that they were relying on. Yeah. Which that's understandable. That's a wrongful conviction if the boot print was inadmissible evidence. So he gets to go home. He leaves. So now, after that appeal, a new prosecutor comes in when the case is reopened. So there's a new prosecutor in the office and they open a reinvestigation. They mm. do 10 years of reinvestigation Dang. on this case. So after those 10 years, it's all of a sudden 2007. Whoa. And a woman named Judy Lynn Scott comes forward and gives another additional eyewitness statement. Oh. She says that she saw her ex-husband, Kenny, the night of the disappearance with the victims. What? And they were just walking around. Okay, that's interesting. Kenny, and what? That night, Kenny comes home to Judy and he is all bloody and cut up. And he <gasps> said that he got into a fight with his friend Chester at a bar. Okay. <laughs> Chester. I know. Chester. That's and name. that's all he could give. He couldn't even give like a last name. He was Literally, like, his just Chester. Chester. Oh, yeah. Chester <laughs> at the bar down the street. <laughs> Oh, I know. So silly. Oh, so, my gosh. At this point, what are you thinking? Did Dale get out scot-free? Or is Kenny this new person that Judy decides to bring up so many years later? Right. It really makes you it? ask yourself why why she waited so long. Like, maybe she was scared of him, if this is true. Maybe she wants some reward. Maybe there was a reward. Maybe you know that, if there was or not. That she was like trying to get her hands on or also I just have to say correct me if I'm wrong but Dale can't he's done right like he can't be tried again Mm -hmm. for the same thing so like correct he's out so I don't know I'm I'm intrigued but I'm not fully convinced I mean they don't really have anything solidifying on Dale definitely some Mm -hmm. weird odd coincidences maybe but nothing solid so I'm interested yeah, like you said, it's really weird that Judy decides, like, like why in now? 2007, mm-hmm. and these these murders happened in 1982. Why almost, These like, guys 20, are probably almost dead. More than 20 years later. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, w- why? Why, Judy? Crazy. I don't know. We'll find out. So, it fi- we find out that Kenny and Chester did know Todd and Annette. Okay. But they so never Chester's said real. that they were... <laughs> Oh, I don't Chester know why. In real. my brain, Chester. Chester was not real. <laughs> Chester is real. He is oh real. Oh, my God. Okay. So, they never said that they went into the cornfield, mm-hmm. but they were around the area. Okay. And Kenny's description of why he came home bloodied and cut up that night was because he cut himself on the window trying to, like, break back into his house. I guess he lost his keys while he was at mm-hmm. the bar. He tried to punch in the window, and he ended up cutting himself. Mm-hmm. That happens, I mean, okay. I guess, unless you knock on the door yeah. and ask for Judy to let you in, but yeah. whatever. So Kenny's sidekick, Chester, needed to be found to solidify the alibi. Nobody okay. knew where Chester was at this okay. point. They were like, we hear about your friend Chester <laughs> from Judy. We hear yeah. about your friend Chester from Kenny. Where the hell is Chester? So we how don't know. do Chester and what's his face? Oh, I already forgot his name. How do Kenny? Chester and Kenny know the victims? Did it say like, why do they know who they are? We don't know. It said that they had just like been partying that night. And like oh, they like, interesting. I think it comes up a little bit later, but they were like all drinking together. And okay. like, they had asked Kenny and Chester to like buy weed from them to go and get like high in the field or something. Okay. I guess. So they're not like typical 80s. Friends. OK, got it. <laughs> no. So they need to find Chester to figure out what the heck this alibi is. Like, did they get in a fight? Did he break into the window? How did he get cut up? What was he doing that night? We'll figure it out. 
So the next thing that happens in the investigation, the police receive a letter from an inmate saying that he feels a little bit guilty about the whole murder and that he feels like he needs to come clean. And later on, Chester they figure got this? out this letter. No, the police got this. Oh, the police got it. Okay. Yeah, so they're continuing their investigation. They're just looking through all of the evidence. Hmm. And then all of a sudden, as they're reopening this investigation, this letter comes in from an inmate. And he's like, I feel a little bit guilty. I feel like I need to get this off my chest. Oh, boy. I need to tell you what happened that night. Yeah. And we find out that this letter comes from the Chester that we've been talking about. Oh, shit, Chester. Yes. So Chester is like, I feel guilty. I need help. Like, I feel like I need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So Chester then gets like interviewed by the police because he's like, I need to talk. And he says that Kenny and Chester were drinking all day. And then Todd and Annette found them at that bar, like I was saying, Mm -hmm. and they wanted to buy weed from them. Mm -hmm. And they were like, "Okay, whatever, we'll sell them weed and then let them be on their merry way. Mm -hmm. Wrong. They follow uh, Ted and Annette, Todd and Annette. Ch- uh, Kenny and Chester follow Todd and Annette into the cornfield after they had bought weed from them. They just start following them. Okay. Chester advances on Annette because he thinks that she's so attractive and he said, I'm going to have sex with Annette tonight. Oh, to boy. Kenny. So that's why they decide to, decide to start following them. Yeah. And Annette's like, no, Chester, like, I don't want this. Like, this is Todd. He's my fiance. I love him. I don't want to mess mm-hmm. around with you. And then Kenny pulls out a gun of course, because mm-hmm. that's the way to get yeah, that's to logical your friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he shoots Todd because Todd starts fighting. Okay. So now we find out that the gunshots that they heard was Kenny shooting Todd to shut him up and ke- keep him from fighting his friend Chester because yeah. they wanted to have sex with Annette. Annette. Okay. And so after they shoot Todd, they then... Um, shoot Annette because she's a witness. They're like, well, what the heck do we do with her? She right. watched us like kill him. We can't leave her alone. So then they do end up shooting and killing Annette. Oh, boy. And then they have their machete that they come over and they start chopping up the bodies with. And that is close to the end. So Damn. we find out that the Chester and Kenny are the two that committed these murders, not Dale. So apparently, Bruh did skin, skin a deer, deer in the living room. room. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Which is very odd. And apparently, he just liked coming home and getting naked. Great. Dale is not a good person. No. Because he, he comes not. home and gets naked and subjects his whole family to that. And he still did molest Annette for like 10 years. So, not a great person. However, he did not commit murder. And... The way that they finally get them is that they do a lie detector and it shows that they cannot tell the truth and they are lying about what happened on the night. They can't get their stories straight and lie detectors aren't admissible in court. It's just a way for them to show the victim or not the victims that the suspects Mm -hmm. they ask this. I can't speak. They ask the suspects questions and they're like, what? happened and then they're like hey you just lied and then it forces them into a confession right so that's kind of what happened in this scenario and the family was completely on the side that dale had done this todd's family was like oh dale definitely did this but once they heard the stories and they had those forced confessions out of kenny and chester they completely flipped and they're like nope it's them we got to put them in jail yeah so they are then arrested and charged with the murders of both todd schultz and annette what's her last name annette cooper so they go to trial and instead of going to trial actually they actually take pleas so chester pled guilty to both of them and he said that he was involved in the dismemberment and the killing of both individuals and he is sentenced to life with no possibility of parole Mm -hmm. and then kenny takes a plea and he gets time served which i'm not exactly sure what that means but he wasn't sentenced to life so he i guess could eventually have the opportunity to get out i'm not sure wasn't kenny the one who literally happening made the shots like literally held the gun kenny did shoot so weird. todd but uh, i'm not sure 
they weren't super specific about their yeah. involvement in the murders. They were both kind of just there and they were like, yep, we did it. And we chopped him up. The end. <laughs> okay, this is something. But we're... Mm. Excuse me. I have a question. Okay. So, yes. you said that the police received a letter from Chester, right? And he was an inmate. Do we know why he was yes. in jail the first time? No. I think that they said in the documentary, but I don't think that it was anything close to like, murder yeah. or anything that they would be able to connect to a murder. That's so it weird. It might have just been like a drug, drug charge or probably. something small. Okay. Got it. Crazy though. That's Were so you expecting crazy. that big of a twist? No, I was kind of low key like, I don't know if it's a deal, but that's wild. Yeah. And I really wanted to find like a podcast on this to listen to instead of like a documentary show yeah. or like a docu-series. But we're Ooh. like the third podcast to ever cover this. Wow. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Should Let us know if you like this. Should we get into more true crime? I know Marissa's a big fan. I have been picking back I up. I used to be a big fan of true crime. Then I stopped because I get scared pretty easily. Mm-hmm. And I've been listening to a few here and there lately. Just like not everything I listen yeah. to. I've just been filtering it back in with my other yeah. stuff. So I like it. I enjoy it. Yeah, I do too. I was stuck in between and I made Kyle choose. I was in between doing a conspiracy theory, Ooh, fun. doing a true crime story, yeah. or doing um, the meaning behind Halloween, <gasps> Cute. or like the history of Halloween. Yeah. I couldn't decide. So, so if you guys ones. would want any of those other ones, let us know. Since, I mean, I did a true crime story. I could always do another. Yeah. Or we could do a conspiracy theory and I could like pull the audience and see what your favorite one is and maybe do yes. some research on that. That's fun. Or I could do the history of Halloween. I don't know if we Yay. have any more slots open this year, but we could move things let us around. Know. And we'll see. figure it out. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Oh, my God. But that's the story of Annette Cooper and Todd Schultz. Rest in peace. That's wild. Rest in peace. Wow. It's crazy. Rip. Rip Logan, Ohio. But that's it. We did it. That's so crazy. Dude. I know. Shivers. Shivers. I love how you always pick things in, like, Ohio or Virginia. And I'm always like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So close. Yeah. One of these days I won't. But I just thought it was too topical to not. It's too good. Yeah. Creepy things happen everywhere, you guys. Listening. Be careful out there. (laughs) Be careful out there. Especially on Friday the 13th, I guess. (laughs) Especially. Yeah, we better be real careful. Eek. I'm nervous. Just kidding. We're no cursing my wedding day on Friday the 13th. Literally no. We can't. (laughs) I know. That was just too good. I'm like, this is so Marissa. I don't even know. It's just so perfect for you. But thank you guys for listening. I love doing these research because it's just an excuse for me to watch spooky stuff on TV. Right. <laughs> but if you want another one, please reach out, email so us, DM us on Instagram. And like I said, let us know if you would like a conspiracy theory or a like story of Halloween kind yes. of story because I'd love to do either of those. And we will see you next week. Yes. And with that, I'm Erica. And I'm Marissa. And, and we, we run on coffee. Run on coffee. Bye.